Cantaloupe. Hello, and a very, very warm welcome to Gelato's Parlor. And this is your host and creator of Gelato's Parlor, Ray Gelato. Very nice to be back with you again. I haven't done a podcast in a few weeks, so uh, I hope you enjoy this one. And before I get started, I'd like to thank you very, very, very much for your lovely reviews that you've left on Apple Podcasts. And uh, most of them have been five star. In fact, all of them have, which has been really, really nice of you. Thank you. And if you're enjoying these podcasts, can I ask you, would you mind just subscribing to the Apple Podcasts? Because it really helps me out if I get a lot of subscribers on these things and we can reach a wider audience. Um, Now, on these podcasts, I'm a a live musician, as everybody knows, and a sax player, singer, and a band leader entertainer but um i do enjoy talking about other stuff not just music some some i will do about music but others i will do about um you know current affairs i I try to stick away from politics or steer away from politics um because uh we've got enough people doing that and it's uh it's quite depressing at the moment but um i would like to speak about um uh, london today really and uh unfortunately it's not all the good things because uh, I grew up in this city. I grew up in West London, and um, I don't know if you have noticed as well. Uh, if you you live in London, listening to these podcasts or you're visiting, but the city just seems to be rife and uh, literally infested with roadworks at the moment and building works. And it really something that starts to get on my nerves because as soon as they finish one, they put another one up, and some they never even finish. Some will stay up forever, I think. I think when people look back at um, our civilization in the years to come, like we've done with early man or the uh, the Roman Empire or whatever, or the Normans, they'll look back and some of these artifacts will still be standing with nobody working. Um, with these kind of barriers, these orange and white barriers that, that I've, I've seen a couple of them up probably for years and, and uh, they've just been left. Uh, it really beggars belief, doesn't it? So uh, uh, a future civilization will probably look at us and be able to work out just what we were doing because of the unfinished roadworks that I believe will still be there. <laughs> anyway, what I find is as well that it's not just the roadworks, it's the constant construction that they're doing all the time on the pavement. So they're, people, they're building up these new apartments all the time. Um, you know, I don't think these are, I wish they were, but I don't think they're going to be affordable housing, which they always say they, they seem to be, you know, a quarter of a million an apartment and God knows who lives in these places. I really don't know, but I'm not sure if they are actually London residents, but they just, they, these places are going up everywhere, right? In Soho, in the West End, near where I live in, in West London. And, um, they're just restricting the pavements everywhere. So you can't walk. You've got these barriers. You've got these restricted pavements and all this sort of thing. And it's very, very hard, I find, you know. So not only are the pavements being restricted, but the, the, the roads, of course, with the cycle lanes reducing, you know, an already small city down to one lane a lot of the time. Now, I, I know people have to cycle and all this, but I don't consider personally, and it's just my opinion, that these things have been particularly well thought through, not in an already congested and closed down city, because it's been closed down already with bus lanes and things like that. Um, it's a real nightmare. But my particular bugaboo is at the moment the temporary traffic lights. I mean, if you've seen these things, they just seem to stick them up, the council or the water authorities or the gas, whoever it is doing the work and leave them. And they are red for like 10 minutes and you are waiting and waiting and waiting with the frustration. And as soon as you get past these things, they let two cars through on green, they go red again. They call it these three way traffic controls. And these things are not kidding around my area. They must have been up uh, on and off. They'll finish one and they'll put another set for about three years all around West London. And uh, I rarely see. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen anybody working on them. They miraculously disappear one day. And uh, and that's it. And uh, I really feel sometimes like stopping my car late at night in the dead of night when I'm coming home from a gig or whatever and literally kicking these damn things over because they are such a nuisance. They really are. And it's another it's a it's a culture, these temporary traffic lights. It's 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 most of the time completely unnecessary. And you won't mind if you actually saw somebody working on these things. But there isn't. And it's um it's just a disregard for people who I mean, I don't think any of us want to use our cars. But we have to. If you've got equipment to transport or you're in the building trade or whatever, your delivery, you have to. There's no choice. I don't use my I've stopped using my car in the day. I just get the uh, the tube if I can. But obviously at night I need to do that, you know, to take my gear around and the uh, the guys in the band, the drummer, especially in bass play, need to do it. And it's just become a misery for us with this endless road works, temporary traffic lights and road closures. This road closures is another culture like the temporary traffic lights where they will just randomly close a road off and you are trying to get through and it creates terrible congestion. But anyway, 
I, I really I don't understand why this city has been left for dead like this, and I don't understand why they can't have somebody or somebody coordinating these things and, and at least finish one uh, uh, before you start putting another one up. But because it, it's it's just stewed up all the time. And uh, you know I, I I like to sort of rant about this because uh, it, it is it is you know trying to be a bit humorous about it. But um the other sort of rant I'd like to do today about London is the um because I I, I will do one eventually about all the things I love in London and believe me there's many but I am doing a, a, a couple of things that I really hate about this city at the moment and one is the endless roadworks everywhere like I've just said with your temporary traffic lights and your endless building and the noise and the dust and the drills and the jackhammers it's become an unbelievably noisy city this place because of all this and not to mention the articulated lorries that are delivering the building stuff and are, are congesting the roads and belching out diesel fumes and it, it, you know it's just a pain in the ass to be honest and i i travel a lot you know all around the, the, the world with, with with the business and i have for 35 years and i don't think i've seen it quite as uncoordinated and as bad uh, and as bad in most other places yeah, they, they seem to be some system and here there isn't it's just left but my other sort of rant i'd just like to do and uh briefly is the uh, the tube you know because um i find the tube a very it's a law unto itself well point one it's expensive right and it's my mode of getting around as it is many other people's i use it during the day um my main line is the piccadilly line but let's just start with a tube, right? So you start with, with, with you getting in and the Oyster cards and the, the way you can pay on your credit card now with the fare is quite a good thing. But um, not only is it phenomenally expensive, but you'll get down the, to the escalator. So you'll go to Piccadilly or Leicester Square. This is a real uh, bugbear of mine. And people stand on the, uh, the left-hand side. So you're trying to go down. Now, people should be standing on the right-hand side. So you, so I'm talking about going down. So you can walk down if you want. I like to walk down. I like to walk up. So people are standing there. And most of the people are standing there are, are, are probably tourists from another country. Now, I'm not blaming them because they don't know. But there should be signs that says, please keep to the right. Because you've always got one idiot standing on the bloody left-hand side. And there's a queue of people just trying to walk behind. Because I, I like to walk down the escalator. So that's the first thing. You've got the right... The, the right-hand side people pe people standing there, right? <laughs> Sorry, they're standing on the left-hand side, blocking everyone who wants to walk down. Then you get on these tubes. Now, what I find about them is they seem to be less and less, the Piccadilly line especially, seems to be less and less frequent. So it used to be three, four minutes because it's the major route to the airport, you know. So you sit there and you're waiting. And sometimes now, I've noticed the last few months, 11 minutes, 12 minutes, 10 minutes, Consequently, because it's so packed, because it is the major line that goes right from the Cockfosses to Heathrow, everybody's using it. It is mobbed, and the train gets more and more mobbed the less trains they put on now. I don't know why they're not putting on some more trains. I've heard maybe it's lack of drivers or whatever. Now, how can there be lack of drivers? That job pays a pretty decent amount of money. I think I'd do it, you know, if I wasn't doing music, if I could get in. It seems to be a lack of drivers. So there's lack, it, it's as bizarre. Then there's the obligatory signal failure. You'll all hear these sort of gobbledy gook things. There's a signal failure at Earl's Call, so the next train will be in another 15 minutes. Every day you hear the other thing, severe delays, severe delays on the Metropolitan, severe delays on this. It ain't good enough for a major city, man. It's not good enough. We're a rich place. There's something gone horribly wrong. I do appreciate the underground's old, but there's something that's gone horribly wrong. So you get on this the Piccadilly line, for example, and there are bags everywhere because people are taking luggage to go to the airport, of course, you know, uh, we've all done it. We all have to do it. The other point is, right, why do people need so much luggage? I'll see families of three people, two adults and a kid, and they will have seven or eight huge bags. And they don't put the bags in the um, by the um, aisles where they're supposed to be. There are sort of little allocated spots. Um, they, the bags will be piled up. This is one that really annoys me in the aisles of the train. So you can't sit down. You're tripping over people's bags. People have too much luggage anyway. These massive suitcases that look like uh, tr the old traveller's trunks, you know. And I kind of find that insane as well, really annoying. Now, again, I don't blame the people so much because the, the problem is that the TFL should put signs up and says, if you can, if there's room, put your luggage on the side right where it's supposed to be. No, TFL, the, the typical thing, they don't do that. And the other thing TFL don't do, 
So anyway, just to backtrack, consequently, you've got luggage piled up. And this is another problem that's getting worse and worse and worse on these lines. And it's a real pain, you know, it's a nuisance. That's not to say the backpacks, which I'll leave for another time. A backpack. So you're sitting down and you've got some dude's backpack in your face. You know, I don't know where this backpack's been, man. I mean, it's been all probably dragged all over the floor and germs and the backpacks in my face. You know, guys, it's hard to say, please move, move your backpack, you know. And the other thing what I think TFL should do is put up signs that says, do not eat on the tube. No eating. They, I remember seeing some puerile sign a few years ago that said, don't, oh, please don't eat smelly food on the tube. And uh, No, hang on a minute. It's not please don't, don't do it. Now, I have honestly witnessed a couple eating a full curry on the tube, all out the steel container, the, the, the um, what are they called, the foil containers. And I think they, they even had a naan bread and rice. I'm not joking to you. And they were slurping up this curry sitting there, completely oblivious. Ridiculous. Now, I've seen people eating sandwiches, of course. I'm not sort of just talking about crisps or popcorn. Okay, that's fair enough. But sandwiches, curry, I've seen somebody eating, many people eating a doner kebab, a pizza, masticating next to me on the tube. Masticating, that is. Remember, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, so eating, masticating loudly, you can hear the noise of their chewing. Quite recently, a, uh, a lady pulled out an egg sandwich and started eating it. I was with a friend of mine. He said, oh, do you believe this, Ray? She's actually eating an egg, an egg sandwich. And it stunk, you know, the carriage out. And TFL should put signs up. It should be banned. It's disgusting. And I, I, one for the life of me, I don't get why on earth somebody would want to eat on the tube. It's the most bizarre thing in the world. I mean, it's not exactly a gourmet environment, the bloody thing, is it? I mean, McDonald's is, 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 is cleaner marginally. <laughs> and uh, why would you want to do it? Why would you want to eat on the tube? Surely you could, uh, somebody could pick or find a couple of extra minutes in the day just to eat outside at least or eat your thing in a cafe but i think it's rude it's antisocial and uh, uh finally i think you know you we all we all are guilty of these things you know everybody acts very strange when you're you're um cooped up together and you're kind of like you know eating each other like they say if you put a lot of rats in a room they'll start eating each other well, that's how, how it is on the underground nobody seems to care about each other and like i say we're all guilty of it so you'll get the eaters the selfish people with the luggage and one of the worst ones, I think, is the, um, the, the, well, I used to think the headphones were bad, where you could just hear the, and you can't make out what tune's playing at all. It's just this sort of tinny uh, sound, folk on their headphones, it's annoying. But uh, even worse than that, and it seems to be a, another sort of a recent culture, well, especially since the, everyone's got smartphones and kids and whatever, that people seem to want to play their music and their YouTube clips or whatever without headphones. So you're sitting on a bus or a train or whatever it is, and you could just hear people are just looking and with no headphones at all, and they're inflicting their, their music on you. It's absolutely bizarre how there's just no self-awareness that you could just put on something uh, on your phone without the headphones, and everyone's just just having to listen to it. It's, uh, it's highly annoying, but uh, it could be me just being a grumpy old fart these days. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm really glad you, uh, you're listening the gelatos parlor i'll be coming to i'll come to a close now and um i can't wait to see you and uh hope hope you enjoy the next episode i'll put that out pretty soon i hope you enjoy this one as well my little rant about the road works and the transport system anyway this is ray saying to you goodbye and i'll see you all on the other side this is gelatos parlor well don't you want a little pizza me